And now we have a talk given by Professor Luke Campbell. But before that, will Professor Henry Tai please come forth to introduce Professor Luke, please? Uh, as uh, Tony mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, so happened that all three speakers uh, who are really active and well known worldwide turned out to be uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, but uh, Fred went to MIT, Ming Zhong went to Caltech. So the only person really is Hong Kong grown scientist, uh, probably is uh, Lo Gumbiu, our next speaker. He graduated from Hong Kong U. So I think she is uh, 1976. Uh, Gumbiu actually. Uh, <laughs> I see. Okay, see there. All right. Okay, Gumbio. Uh, Gumbio uh, actually uh, is uh, one of the very prominent uh, Don't worry about it. particle physicists. Uh, he's a professor of physics at Berkeley, and he's also a senior faculty member of the uh, Lawrence Berkeley Lab. Uh, he's uh, best known uh, by being the leader of the diabetic experiment, which he will describe to us today. And uh, I should point out that uh, the diabetic experiment uh, is possible only because of Gumbiu's leadership and uh, perseverance uh, and uh, the ability in getting US and China to work together as a team. And I think that's actually the first. So uh, we'll hear about it now. Well, thank you for the, the you know, kind uh, introduction. And also, okay, thank you the, for inviting me back here to the, talk to you about okay, my research. Uh, because okay, the, we are now in our hometown, so the, my talk the, is a bit okay, biased. So that you will know, hear more about, you know, say, you know, Taipei than, okay, say, the international, you know, the, you know, the competition. Um, so hopefully, you know, the, you will enjoy it. So uh, as you can see, the, the title of my talk is, okay, Cracking you know, the Standard Model with uh, Neutrinos. And uh, Ming Zhong, you know, just, okay, the, you know, the explain to you how wonderful and successful, you know, the standard model of particle physics is. And what I'm going to tell you is, okay, yes, it's pretty perfect. However, we do find a crack in this model. So now the only unknown is whether or not this crack will develop into okay, a hole. So we'll see you know, the, you know, what might happen in the future. So first of all, uh, let me uh, tell you okay, what a neutrino is. So essentially, okay, a neutrino is a very tiny and shy, sometimes we got ghostly you know, subatomic okay, particle. Now you may wonder, okay, the, you know, why you know the, we should care about okay, neutrinos. It turns out okay, neutrinos is okay, one of the most okay, abundant material okay, in the universe. If we start okay, say from okay, say the large scale, it, in this case, okay, we find out uh, on the average, okay, we have about okay, three hundred. Uh, so-called cosmic neutrinos. In other words, okay, these are the neutrinos left over, you know, from the Big Bang. You know, uh, in about okay, only you know, okay, one joint of our fingers. Now, of course, okay, this is okay, you know, quite remote. We seldom okay really you know, okay go to the universe. So we can go you know, okay get closer. So in this case, now we are you know, okay into our solar system. And then it turns out okay the sun, you know the and produce okay an enormous number of okay uh, neutrinos, and if we okay just stick our finger out, then you can see okay that in a second we get okay hundred billions of no neutrinos going through. So yes, this is a huge number, right? And you say okay, I still don't care. We can then get even closer. Now okay, the on Earth we have an atmosphere. And when the cosmic rays, you know, the strikes, you know, the atmosphere, 
uh, it will produce okay, the, a lot of elementary particles, and most of them okay, are not stable, and they decay very quickly uh, to give us okay, the, the neutrinos. And fortunately, in this case, okay, the number of neutrinos okay, coming from you know, the, the atmosphere, or this is called uh, atmospheric neutrino, is a rather small number. You can see you know, okay, the, you know, it's less than okay, one okay, per, per second. And on Earth, it turns out, okay, we also okay, can get a lot of, this time, okay, anti-neutrinos, you know, from uh, nuclear reactors. So as a matter of fact, you know, when we operate a, a typical, okay, commercial uh, nuclear reactor that can produce, okay, about one gigawatt of electricity, and every second, it can produce, okay, about 10 to the 21 uh, anti-neutrinos, okay, so this is certainly you know, a huge number you know, the, for us to you know, okay, say, the, think about. Now, the last okay, example uh, about neutrinos is okay, sometimes okay, we eat banana okay, for breakfast. And it turns out uh, because of the presence of uh, potassium-40, that decays into you know, the, you know, the anti-neutrinos. So, one typical banana will give you okay, about you know a million you know, anti neutrinos okay the, you know per day you know through our body. So you may say, well, certainly I'm still alive. What's the point of worrying about neutrinos? It turns out neutrinos ultimately that's tied to our ex existence because it turns out without no neutrinos, the sun cannot generate you know, the heat and light. So therefore, in this case, okay, the universe is black, and certainly we cannot survive. So therefore, in this case, we better okay, learn something about, you know, say, the neutrinos. Now, as uh, the Ming Zhong said okay, in his talk, in the standard model of okay, particle physics, altogether, we have okay, three kinds of neutrinos. Now, one is called you know, the electron neutrino, and the discovery of this one you know, that led to a Nobel Prize okay, uh, in 1995. And then uh, another one is called okay, the, the, the muon uh, neutrino. Uh, that also okay, led to another okay, Nobel Prize you know, the given by you know, the Disney free gentleman. And uh, the last one is okay, the, what we call uh, say, the tau neutrinos. So the reason why okay, we name this neutrinos okay that way is because okay when they you know interact uh, among themselves or with matters, and uh, they will only you know, okay say give us okay say the associate you know, okay say the so called charge lepton. So for instance, for the electron uh, neutrino, then it will associate with the electron. So it's, in other words, okay, these are you know say a way for us to label you know, okay say uh, you know, the kind of, okay, say, the you know, particles, okay, involved. Now, one interesting thing uh, about, okay, neutrino is, okay, the back into the, um, the 50s, you know, the professor, you know, the uh, Li and Yang, okay, the, based on, okay, experimental observation at that time, concluded that uh, neutrinos, okay, should have no mass. So as a matter of fact, okay, the, you know, this, okay, the, you know, say, uh, statement or assumption has been built into, okay, the, the standard model. And we have been using, okay, this uh, an, uh, assumption, you know, the all along until only recently. Now, after, okay, say, uh, you know, we know about the neutrinos, at least, okay, the nomenclature, now I can explain to you about, okay, say, uh, why, okay, the, you know, uh, we call it, okay, say, ghostly or uh, a uh, shine uh, elementary particles. So we call, okay, we said, okay, if we, you know, say, have a banana for breakfast, then, okay, the, we would generate, uh, you know, some anti-neutrinos, okay, in our body. It turns out, okay, imagine, say, suppose we could fill, you know, the whole universe with, okay, water. Then you know, the neutrino, the uh, anti-neutrino emitted okay, from our body and travel you know, through okay, say, this you know, universe of water you know, for about okay, say, you know, several hundred okay, light years 
Before, okay, it can collide with, okay, say, a water molecule. So that means, okay, the, the anti-neutrinos in general, you know, they do not like to interact with matter that easily. Or another way, okay, for you to appreciate, okay, how weak, you know, the interaction is, um, since, okay, we have so many solar neutrinos, you know, that are going through our body, then on the average, it turns out, okay, only one of them can, okay, collide with, okay, say, an atom in our body maybe once a week. So this is, okay, how rare that is. So in ours, even though, okay, you know, we are living, okay, the, in an atmosphere of, you know, neutrinos, however, okay, we don't have to worry, you know, say, neutrinos they will kill us. So you should feel free, you know, to continue to consume bananas. Now, because, okay, the neutrinos, you know, interact with matter so weakly, and it turns out, okay, that it is a very good probe for us to you know, to study the uh, internal structure of the sun, because okay, the, according to okay, our understanding of okay, say the sun, uh, it gets you know, okay, its energy from nuclear fusion, okay, at the center, and the uh, neutrinos, you know, are involved in in okay, the, you know, this kind of okay, the nuclear fusion process. And then about, okay, you know, uh, roughly two to three seconds or so, those neutrinos, okay, will uh, escape, you know, from the surface of the sun and go into space. So one way, okay, that we can study, you know, the internal of the sun is then, you know, just, okay, try to detect, you know, those uh, sonar neutrinos. And indeed, okay, that's what's, okay, the being done the, in the uh, 60s, 70s, and the early 80s. Uh, by Professor okay, Ray Davis using okay, the, you know, this okay, big tank of okay, essentially you know, okay, the, you know, breaching the, you know, the uh, solution. So basically you know, what he did and was to you know, the count essentially the number of you know, the sonar neutrinos okay, with uh, this detector. And to the big surprise, you know, he find out okay, say the number of uh, uh, sonar neutrinos uh, he detected was not consistent with okay our expectation. So then the question is, like, why okay the you know the they are, they are not the same. So for a while, you know, this is what we call okay sonar neutrino problem, and we couldn't uh, figure it out. As a matter of fact, okay, the, during that time, okay, I was a graduate student, and I asked okay all the senior physicists, okay, what's going on with this experiment? So they all told me, well, don't worry about it. Go back to work. Okay, he's wrong. Also, okay, now we know, okay, he is right. As a matter of fact, okay, he got the prize for that. Now, besides, okay, the sonar neutrino, we also know the, just know the, gone through, know the, the exercise, knowing that, okay, we also can get neutrinos, okay, from uh, atmosphere. And it turns out that in the 80s and the 90s, you know, there were some of the big detectors, okay, worldwide, Try to look for you know, something we call the proton decay, and using okay, say these detectors, it turns out okay that we can uh, detect and study you know, okay, the, the neutrinos you know, coming from you know, the atmosphere. For instance, okay, the, the most okay, say visible you know, experiment which is still running is called you know, the you know, super you know, cameo kinde experiment, and this is okay detect their the, the detector. So Mingzhong show you, you know, okay, say the size of you know, the Atlas detector, and here, you know, okay, you can see you know, the the size of okay, say this okay, water pool. You may say it's okay about forty meter deep and about forty meter wide. So it has altogether roughly about fifty kiloton of okay, water, and it's extremely pure. So as a matter of fact, you know, if you, you know, they stand you know, on top of the water and then look inside the detector, then you see, you know, okay, say the photo sensors or the photo multiply tubes, you know, at the bottom. Very clearly. As a matter of fact, okay, I was very fortunate, okay, I have done that once. And uh, I was shocked, you know, that to see, you know, okay, say how pure the water is. And using, you know, okay, say this kind of uh, say water the uh, churn cough detector, so called. And people, okay, can then, uh, you know, say, uh, study, you know, the atmospheric neutrinos. And to, you know, say, uh, our surprise, uh, 
the definitive results okay, coming from okay, uh, chemical candy is this. When we look at, let's say, the number of atmospheric neutrinos detected as a function of, okay, say, this is called a sine of angle. Basically, we measure, okay, say, the angle respect to, okay, say, the vertical axis. And you can see in this case, when uh, the anti uh, and the neutrinos are sort of, okay, say, coming, coming okay, from the top down into now the detector, then, okay, the number of events, okay, observed by, you know, okay, Camille Kande is pretty consistent with, okay, say, our expectation. On the other hand, if we, okay, look at, you know, the anti-neutrinos coming from, okay, the South Pole through the Earth and hit, okay, the detector, okay, in Japan, and you find, okay, say, the number of anti uh, uh, number of neutrinos is very different from, okay, our expectation. So this is okay, uh, you know, a very puzzling result. You know why? Okay, the you know, okay, the we see you know, okay less you know the you know atmospheric neutrinos. Okay, the, you know the, under this okay the, the situation. So for a while, you know, people okay the, you know the, you know the, try to explain that. Now okay the, we find now okay the best you know, the explanation is what we call okay the you know, neutrino oscillation. So let's see, okay, how it works. So imagine, say, at the beginning, we start off with, okay, one type of uh, neutrinos. So in this case, okay, all the white goats. And we let them, okay, say, just to evolve in, in time. So, uh, you know, sometimes later, and we count, okay, say, the number of, okay, white goats. And you can see naturally, okay, now we have only, okay, uh, you know, three instead of four because one of them is changed to, okay, another kind. Now, if we continue to watch, okay, say, the, you know, say uh, this bunch of, okay, say, ghost, uh, you know, the ghostly particles, then you can see, okay, the, you know, sometimes, okay, you get even less. And this can, okay, go on and on. So in this case, then now, if we're only focusing on, okay, say, one type of neutrinos, because of, okay, some of them, okay, change to the other, you know, the, you know as a function of time, so therefore, you expect to see less. So therefore, okay, the, this will be okay, a, a confirmation of, okay, say, this idea. And indeed, okay, we have uh, used okay, many different uh, experimental techniques, you know, either using, okay, say, uh, neutrinos provided by nature, or, you know, say, using you know, the artificial sources. We have, okay, say, confirmed, okay, say, the two types of, okay, um, uh, Oscillations, okay, we have just, okay, discussed. So based on, okay, say, our current understanding, then there should be, okay, one more kind. However, we have no idea, okay, whether, okay, say, that third kind, okay, say, is really just, okay, our imagination or something real. Or uh, if, uh, say, it's, it's there, then, you know, how large, okay, this kind of a neutrino oscillation would be. So rather than try you not know, to sit uh, sit around, okay, say the tossing out ideas, then we better, okay, say get our hands dirty and do the experiment and and just you know, get the you know, the uh, this okay the argument okay say over with. And it turns out, okay, uh, you know, one approach, you know, okay, to uh, find out whether okay we have this okay third kind of uh, neutrino oscillation is to use okay the you know nuclear reactors, and we are extremely fortunate. At, okay, the, we have a uh, nuclear power plant, okay, called uh, the Daibe Nuclear Power Plant, not far away from Hong Kong. And in some sense, okay, I'm very fortunate, okay, I'm from Hong Kong. So therefore, after okay, I survey, you know, the, you know, uh, you know, over six hundred something, okay, nuclear reactor power plants, then I find out, okay, the the best, you know, to do this experiment is in our, you know, neighbor, All right? So as a matter of fact. Uh, uh, this okay idea uh, of Dia Bay uh, was developed you know, in Hong Kong. So in some sense, even though the experiment okay was mounted in China, but the idea comes from okay say this area, right? So now some of you okay have you know, gone to you know, say the Dia Bay nuclear power plant, a uh, nuclear power plant, but okay, so some of you probably haven't. So let me just okay give you a, a quick note, uh, you know, say the tour 
of okay, say the the experiment. So this is okay the the picture of uh, say the so called the Dibe uh, nuclear power complex now. So at the beginning, you know the we you know, try you know to stop building okay say this okay Dibe nuclear power plants. And uh, I think even now, okay, the China Light and pow uh, Power is still the minor shareholder, and it provides okay roughly about half of okay say the electricity consumed by Hong Kong, okay, just by okay say this okay power plant, and then about okay a kilometer to the east, then there's another okay nuclear power plant is called say Ningao, and uh, in 2011, and uh, the the new, the newest one called okay Ningao Two, uh, you know the you know came online. So all the all together okay there are six okay nuclear uh, reactors, you know the, in this okay complex. And the the advantage okay of okay say this site is okay is very obvious if you look at okay say this picture, because okay essentially you know the it's right by okay essentially okay a, a mountain. And since okay, uh, neutrino interaction is so rare, uh, in order to really okay observe okay, the, their interactions, we have to make sure that okay there is no other okay say interference. So, for instance, okay, the, you know when we have okay cosmic rays okay coming from you know, the, say the atmosphere, you know co coming into our detector, and they can okay the generate okay the unwanted signals. Okay? so in order not to reduce you know, this kind of a okay, background. And we have to okay, build the experimental hall and install now a detector okay, underground. So you can see okay, in this case, okay, uh, having you know, the mountain okay, so close to okay, say, the power plant is okay, say, the advantage. As a matter of fact, okay, worldwide, there are only a couple of okay, power plants uh, can provide okay, say, this kind of a condition. So after okay, say we had dinner uh, in the Maison in the Latin, then uh, we we realized that okay, just with the Hong Kong team, we cannot mount the experiment. So therefore, okay, we approach okay our colleagues okay, the, in the Institute of High Energy Physics okay in Beijing, and try to convince them okay this is something okay worth doing, and they can take. The credit and we do the science, and indeed, okay. After okay, say some you know the you know uh, you know uh, negotiation and uh, you know say arm twisting and okay and and convincing the people and so on. So finally, okay, we form okay an international team, and at this moment you can see you know the we have roughly about you know two hundred you know, the collaborators, uh, coming from you know the. You know, China. So the here, okay, from Hong Kong, we have okay the you know Chinese University of Hong Kong and the University of Hong Kong, uh, and then also okay the you know we have even okay say three universities okay from from Taiwan, and then uh, a small team okay from Europe, and then okay from the U.S. You know the altogether there are you know, okay, sixteen uh, institution. And recently, okay, one of my postdocs, okay, uh, you know, the, becomes a faculty um, in Chile. So now, okay, the, he has a team. So therefore, you can see, you know, the, we have essentially, you know, the uh, scientists, okay, coming from, okay, four you know, the continents working on uh, this experiment. And to give you give you some idea, uh, you know how active, okay, say the Hong Kong uh, is involved you know, the, in this experiment. So we have you know, the, uh, hosted okay, several okay, collaboration meetings uh, in Hong Kong. So this is okay one the meeting you know, the, I think in two thousand and seven uh, in the University of Hong Kong. So you can uh, if you okay, look very carefully, you will see you know, okay, the Professor Zhu you know, okay, somewhere there hiding. <laughs> Okay, so with okay, say this uh, team of uh, scientists, uh, then the, we build and run you know, the experiment. So what you are seeing now, okay, is uh, a cartoon drawing of okay the, the configuration of our experiment on top of okay, say the satellite uh, image. So you can see you know, the the red circles are the nuclear the reactors. 
And then about okay, 360 meters you know, from you know, the Dai Bay nuclear power plant, and we dig an underground hole that can accommodate you know, two detectors for detecting you know, the anti-neutrinos. And then uh, from this experimental hall, then we have another tunnel connecting okay, to another experimental hall. Uh, also, you know, they can accommodate you know, two detectors you know, for uh, seeing you know, the anti-neutrino coming from okay, say, mostly this, okay, the, you know, four you know, the nuclear reactors. And then about, okay, about 1.6 okay, kilometers you know, deep into you know, say, the, the mountain, then we have one more okay, experimental hall that can accommodate up to okay, four uh, detectors detect okay, the anti-neutrinos. So the idea is, okay, is like this. You know, using okay, say the detectors in these two okay, so-called you know, near holes, and basically okay, we know how many anti-neutrinos are emitted from okay, say all the nuclear reactors. And then using you know, the, you know, the inverse square law, and we can essentially predict based on okay, what we observe okay, in the two uh, near holes, of the number of anti-neutrinos okay, going into the far hall. And then we can compare with okay, what we observed there. If okay, the, the numbers are not the same, that means okay, now some of them disappear you know, okay, when they travel you know, the, you know, from the reactors to the far hall. So in order to do okay, say this okay, relatively simple experiment just by counting, uh, we have to build okay, all these okay, eight detectors. And in order not to okay, uh, do this, then what we do is okay, right outside of uh, the, uh, the, the tunnel, and uh, we have uh, you know, some okay, uh, you know, uh, buildings. So one of them is okay, what we call the surface okay, assembling building, where you know, the, we assemble uh, all the components shipped from okay, say, you know, different uh, the regions okay, worldwide uh, together, and then when we have okay, the experiment okay, the, you know, settle and begin to take data, then we can essentially control the experiment okay, the, in this okay, the, you know, control buildings. And for instance, now okay, we are in a very stable okay, running condition, and basically you know, there's, there's nobody okay, inside, and we can essentially okay, the, you know, do the experiment with only one or two people you know, taking shifts okay, the, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week in okay, the you know, a year. As a matter of fact, now you know, the it's so okay, the, um, mature that uh, we can even okay, run the experiment remotely okay, from the US or even from Europe. So then okay, we don't have to okay, fly uh, uh, thousands of miles okay, the, to do the experiment. So now to give you some idea you know, how we assemble the detector, uh, I'm going to show you okay, a, a, in a few pictures. So our detector essentially, you know, the is made up of a stainless steel you know, the, you know, the container. So this is about five meter you know, the in diameter, and then actually five meter uh, tall. So what we have done is uh, inside you know, the surface assemb assembling building, uh, we have one area which is okay, blocked off and make sure you know, okay, it's very, very clean. Uh, and also you know, we dig a hole so that uh, we can drop this okay, the, you know, stainless steel uh, tank into it. Of course, okay, I don't mean physically drop it in. Right? Uh, so uh, then we can okay, start okay, to, to work on it. And uh, the assembling of the detector you know, takes okay, the, uh, you know, quite a bit of effort. So usually you will know, okay, require you know, the, you know, say technicians and physicists okay, working together to make sure that, okay, that we assemble things okay, the correctly. And also, okay, there are parts okay, coming from, okay, say, different areas, as I said, for instance, that the stainless steel tank, okay, that actually was made okay, by a shipping company in Zhuhai. And then you know, the, there's okay, the, uh, a refractor, and let's just let's say a mirror, uh, which was built okay, the, in, the, uh, um, uh, let's see, I think in okay, the Santau, near that area, right? And then... Uh, we also you know, okay, uh, have uh, two uh, concentric uh, acrylic vessels inside. Okay, we fill them okay, with liquid okay, the underground. And uh, this you know, the two detectors actually you know, okay, are built you know, okay, the, by two you know, okay, say, the companies. So the in, in, inner one actually was built okay, by a company in Taiwan. 
and this is okay the, the contribution from Taiwan and then okay the outer one you know that was built okay the, in Colorado the US and then we ship it over here now the challenge okay is okay we push you know the you know the technology to the limit for instance okay for the stainless steel tank essentially okay we have to require uh, stainless steel to be extremely low radioactive because okay the we cannot allow okay any kind of okay radioactive okay to get into our detector. Otherwise, okay, they can okay confuse okay the, the signal. So therefore we have to minimize that. And it turns out after okay some uh, studies of okay different samples of stainless steel, we find okay essentially you know, the so-called the virgin steel. That is okay, after you get the raw uh, uh, iron ore, and then you make okay the first batch of okay stainless. Okay, has the lowest okay the radioactivity. So therefore, okay, we had we had to okay, work with you know, the company to make sure that okay they got the message so that they could you know, the, you know purchase okay the right material. And similarly for okay say the the acrylic vessels, these are this they look like okay say you know such okay you know aquarium. However, you know, it turns out the challenge here is okay. This outer, okay, say vessel is four meter in diameter, four meter tall, and then the inner one is three meter uh, in diameter, three meter you know, tall. They had a very, they have a very thin wall, so the inner one is only one centimeter, okay, thick, and then the outer one is only two centimeter. So therefore, you know, that we have to handle this, okay, extremely carefully because, okay, we cannot afford to have any kind of leak. Otherwise, okay, the, then the experiment is over. So you can see, okay, the, you know, then we put things together. Say, for instance, when we have, okay, anti-neutrino, okay, interaction in our detector, then if ultimately, okay, the, the, you know, its energy is converted into, okay, say, visible light. And we use, okay, the, you know, arrays of photomultiply tubes, you know, to detect you know, the light. Okay, then from there, okay, then we can deduce whether, okay, we have anti-neutrino interaction or not. So you can see then you know we put things okay together and then you see okay people okay the you know just okay the dress up like okay the you know the you know what you see okay in movies okay uh, you know for you know, space exploration in our case okay the you know we we have okay sim similar similar kind of a requirement. So after okay we assemble you know, say the entire detector and okay we use okay the uh, a million dollar okay the uh, Trolley, okay, this one okay is uh, is controlled by okay essential joysticks. Uh, okay, even one person okay can drive it down. Right. so this will okay, go down okay into tunnel, go into okay the one experimental hall where okay then we fill the detector with okay something we call a liquid scintillator. That is okay how okay we uh, convert you know, the energy of the anti neutrino into light. And also okay interesting okay for you to point out physicists okay we like to okay say few things okay ourselves. So the liquid scintillator okay used by Dia Bay actually is based on okay something called okay linear alkyl benzene, which is okay the raw material for you know, the making detergent. And however, okay, the, we use this okay to synthesize okay the liquid scintillator ourselves. And uh, and the Hong Kong team actually you know the contributes okay to this part by uh, developing okay a monitor or monitoring you know, the, the optical transparency of the liquid because it's very important to our experiment. So once okay, we have the detector okay, filled with a liquid scintillator and so on, it weighs okay, a little bit over okay, 100 ton. And we use okay, that okay, the, you know, the you know, flatbed truck uh, you know, the, to bring it okay, to the experimental hall and then okay, put it into okay, say the, a water pool which is okay, 10 meters deep and this is about you know, the uh, 16 meter okay long and another 10 meter wide, right? So uh, you can see you know, okay that the whole uh, water pool uh, is filled with water. This is used okay to shield you know, okay any kind of natural radioactivity from you know, okay the surrounding rock from getting into a detector. And once okay we have okay say the detector now shielded by water, then we cover the uh, the Top of okay the pool with okay the you know a, a light tight um, you know cover and then on top then we have you know, another kind of detector for us to you know, the register and okay say any surviving cosmic ray muon going to a detector because okay that those can still okay cause okay trouble so we have to know for sure they uh, they are not okay causing you know, the any any confusion. 
So uh, the experiment started not, uh, to uh, take data uh, in the new Christmas Eve of okay, 2011. And at that time, okay, we thought okay, the, this would be the beginning of a very long journey to find, okay, say, this uh, third kind of uh, neutrino uh, oscillation because, okay, the, at that time, okay, say, the uh, common consensus was, okay, it would be you know, quite small. However, to our big surprise, after, okay, we have collected, okay, say, 55 days of data, and then when we look at the data, then we find out, actually, this okay, third kind of okay, neutrino oscillation is very large. So as a matter of fact, you can see okay, from this result, when we compare with, okay, say, the number of detected okay, anti-neutrino in the, in, in the experimental hall comparing with our prediction, then you can see, okay, the, at the near hall, we see a little bit of, okay, say, uh, you know, say, the deficit. You know, when we compare with, okay, say, the, what we know about, okay, say, the nuclear reactor, and then look at the far hall, okay, um, uh, at that time, okay, we had only three detectors installed, and we saw, okay, essentially, okay, a large deficit about, okay, essentially, you know, the, you know say, uh, uh, let's see, uh, you know, about eight percent or so, okay, the, you know, the reduction. Okay. So when we, okay, the release this result, uh, we had, okay, some concern. So therefore, we had to, okay, say, make sure you know, that we are not fooling ourselves. So one way, okay, to check our result, okay, is correct. Is okay, the, we look at uh, the number of anti-neutrino event, okay, we detected, comparing with, okay, essentially how much, okay, the electricity, uh, the power plant, the you know, generated, and you can see, okay, in this case, uh, the number of events, okay, we observe certainly follow, okay, our prediction, you know, the very well. So indicating, okay, the anti uh, the events, okay, we observe, you know, clearly, you know, okay, coming from, okay, say the nuclear reactors. So the, you know, these are all, okay, say two new holes. And then when you go to the far hall, then you see now, okay, the data points consistently, okay, the lower than, okay, expectation. So therefore, this is okay, a confirmation of, okay, say the the signal. Of course, okay, the most compelling, okay, evidence is this graph. And here, okay, you can see, okay, we look at, you know, essentially, you know, the, the deficit of, okay, events as a function of, okay, say, the distance traveled, okay, by the anti-neutrino in some sense, okay? But, okay, we just use, okay, a ratio of length divided by the energy of the anti-neutrino, but they, they're same. Here, okay, you can really see, okay, the, you know, the sinusoidal, okay, behavior. So, therefore, you know, this is, okay, certainly, the, okay, the unambiguous, and our result, okay, was shortly, okay, confirmed by, okay, our rival experiments. Um, but the significance of, okay, say, our result, okay, can be summarized, okay, the, by this, okay, slide. Um, so that by the end of, okay, 2012, uh, the prominent, okay, say, uh, journal, okay, science, uh, uh, essentially, okay, the consider, okay, say, Diabe as, okay, one of the top 10, okay, the, the major discovery in science of that year. So the, we lost to, okay, say, the discovery of the Higgs, unfortunately. Right? And to, okay, the, our amusement, uh, when I was, okay, the, going back to Berkeley the, from Dai Bay through Hong Kong, and when I was in the Hong Kong airport, okay, waiting for my flight, and just by accident, I picked up, okay, say, Ming Bo, and we got, okay, say, this is a surprise that, okay, only a few of us knew because, okay, the, just before, okay, I, I the, you know, say, the, bought the plane, I sent out the message to the whole collaboration, I, hey, guys, okay, do you know that we just got a prize? <laughs> but given by, okay, the Chinese, okay, news, okay, media. So that is a surprising thing. So, it's, okay, the, you know, the result, okay, is not just appreciated by the scientific community, but even by, okay, say, you know, the, the news media. So... How well, okay, say, Dai Bay, okay, the, can do, the, say, uh, or study, you know, this, okay, third kind of, uh, you know, neutrino oscillation. And this, okay, slide, okay, is busy, but, okay, the, tell you, uh, okay, the whole story. 
So besides, okay, diabetes, there are, okay, say, other experiments worldwide, actually, you know, okay, they're going after, okay, say, this, uh, you know, the you know, phenomenon. And you can see, you know, okay, in 2011, before, you know, diabetes, you know, okay, that started up, essentially, you know, okay, the, the experiments, okay, the couldn't really tell, you know, okay, what was going on about this, okay, say, the third kind of uh, uh, oxidation. However, once okay, the you know Dai okay announced the result, then you could see okay the other experiment okay began okay to okay get you know the you know good results too, right? Uh, however, the the take home message is okay. Look at Dai Bay. Essentially, okay, we provide essentially the, the most precise okay measurement of okay, this third kind, and it's very likely. You know, uh, this result, okay, will continue to dominate, okay, in this, okay, area, you know, for the next, okay, decade, maybe even, okay, more than, okay, say, the next several decades. So, after, okay, say, all this, okay, the interesting, the, you know, say, the adventure, so what do we learn? It turns out, okay, the most important thing we learn from, okay, neutrino oxidation is neutrinos, have to have mass in order to have neutrino oxidation. Because of okay, say this okay, the you know, discovery, then we find out okay, now the standard model of okay, particle physics is no longer perfect. It has a crack. So we have to now okay, uh, figure out how to okay, say uh, modify okay, the, the standard model uh, to accommodate you know, okay, what we observe okay, say the, in the neutrino sector. So besides, okay, the, you know what I have just okay told you, certainly, you know, okay, the, there there's still a lot of things okay we don't know about neutrinos. So this is a list of okay, say the the burning questions, you know, in neutrino physics. Okay, we want to address. So for instance, you know, the among okay, say the three okay neutrinos, we have no idea which one okay is the heaviest or the, the lightest. And also, okay, in the absolute sense, okay, we have no idea, okay, how heavy, okay, each one weight, okay, um, and also, okay, the, we have no idea whether, okay, say the neutrino and, okay, say the its anti partner will oscillate, okay, say the same way or differently, and also, okay, the, we don't know whether, okay, say the neutrino and anti neutrino are identical, and whether, okay, the you know there are other kind of okay, neutrinos we haven't okay discovered. And also, okay, the, you know, if we use okay neutrino now to study the universe, you know, what would okay they tell us? We don't know. Of course, okay, just like okay, uh, what we talk about, okay, say the in the uh, you know Ming Zhong's talk, um, okay, say the physicists or from the scientist's point of view, we love to have okay surprises because this is how okay we'll make progress. If everything works, then it will be very boring. Okay. So in order to address, you know, uh, you know those questions, at least okay, some of those questions related to neutrino uh, neutrinos, we have to essentially okay, build new facilities and design new experiments. So about two years ago, um, some of us okay in Hong Kong uh, began you know, to look into, you know, okay, say the, the feasibility of establishing a new underground facility in Hong Kong. Because, okay, after all, it would be, be nice if we can, okay, just do the experiment in our own backyard, right? So we have looked into, okay, the possibility of using you know, the Daimosan, uh, uh, Lantau Peak, and also the third highest peak you know, in Hong Kong, okay, Sunset. And after, okay, say two years of uh, preliminary studies, we now prefer, okay, uh, to say establish an underground facility, you know, in uh, Lantau, uh, Lantau Peak, and you can see, you know, okay, the advantage of this one is, okay, first of all, okay, is, okay, this is a pretty tall mountain. It will allow us, okay, to build a fairly deep, okay, underground uh, facility, which is important for studying, okay, say the, you know, say even rarer, okay, neutrino, okay, interaction. And also the advantage of this one is, okay, essentially it's very close to, okay, say, the, you know, the airport. Certainly I would love, okay, to fly to Hong Kong, okay, get off the plane within half an hour, then I will be doing my experiment. 
And so this is extremely attractive, okay, even to okay, say the international okay, the you know neutrino community. And from there, then uh, we also okay, now uh, look into okay, say how we may want okay, say the, to lay out the site. So for instance, to give you some idea, so this is okay, the, the drawing okay, prepare uh, with the help of okay, the, uh, the civil engineering the, the development uh, department and also the, the consulting okay, partner, the okay, Arab. So the, this is okay, the, you know, how you know, the, the surface okay, the facility of okay, say this uh, underground uh, uh, experiment uh, facility would look like, and uh, hopefully okay, the, you know we'll get support uh, you know from the community and also okay, the, you know from the government you know, to go ahead. And the idea is okay. Besides okay, doing okay, the fundamental okay, forefront uh, basic research, we want to okay, integrate okay, say certainly education and also outreach okay, to you know, say the you know the general okay, public. To make them okay aware of okay the excitement of okay what we are doing okay the, in basic research. So to this end, thank you. And now we welcome question from the floor. Uh, two quick questions. First one. When you do the experiment in Daya Bay, do you have to dig your own tunnel or you use an existing tunnel? Uh, we, 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 we dug the tunnel. Oh, you, you dug the tunnel, okay. Yes. The second one is that when you're looking at the oscillations, yes. now since the neutral is supposed to travel almost like this, speed of light, so that must happen a very rapid oscillation because your distance is only a few kilometers away from the, uh, that's, from that's, the first attack. That's correct. That's the reason why we use length rather than time. Okay. Uh, two questions. So you said something about that the neutrinos must have mass. I didn't quite catch it. Why? Because of this oscillation, it must have mass. Yes. Why is that? Oh, it it turns out you know, that if we work, I would not say the phenomenology, the oscillation frequency or the oscillation length is uh, dependent on let's say the the difference in the masses of the neutrinos. If uh, say the you know they have zero mass. Or if say the masses okay the, are all the same, then it will not happen. People have always believed that there is this third kind of oscillation, right? That, that's not in doubt. Well, no. It it turns out okay. The if if you look at okay say all the theoretical predictions before okay say we did the experiment, you could get okay prediction of no oscillation up to very large oscillation. Fact that is, I forgot point oh. Right. Yes. Yes. What it says is big enough. Yes. They must have mass. Okay. My well, second, yeah. it, it turns out okay, it's not just okay the dive experiment. It's all the three kinds of okay the neutron oscillations. All give you okay say that condition. You know, it's okay. They the neutrinos have to have mass. Yeah. They have must have mass, but you don't know which one has what mass, and you don't know exactly. How so that's okay. the reason why. Okay, this is okay. Say something we have to go after. Okay. So my second question: is, If you build an under land tower, peak, yes, you won't be that close to the Dia Bay nuclear reactor. So what's uh, what's the source of your neutrinos? And so oh, uh, it depends on you know what we want to to do. I mean, if we want to continue to say do neutrino oscillation, it turns out uh, one the important measurement we can do is to okay say improve our you know say knowledge of okay say so called the first kind you know is related to the solar neutrino because right now okay the that one is not as well known okay as we would like okay uh, so. If we okay, say now have a new detector in Lantau Island, as a matter of fact, that was I proposed okay to IHAP, you know, the, when the, we proposed okay the Dai Bay, say we can have a program. After okay we okay hunt down okay the third kind, 
Now, let's go back, begin now to do a very precise measurement. So in that case, then we can go after the solar one. So in that case, okay, then having, okay, land town, okay, the actually is okay. We can, we can do a good job there. You have natural neutrino from right. solar Right, so therefore surface. we can have the reactor, and also we can have, okay, say, the, you know, say the atmospheric type. So therefore we can look at the others. However, uh, what we want to do okay, ultimately is to really okay, look at, okay, say, uh, uh, the neutrino and the anti-neutrino uh, relationship. In other words, okay, whether they are the same or not. Because actually that is okay, a very fundamental question. You know, the, knowing that will allow us okay, to tell you know, okay, how to build a model. Because right now, we don't know how, no, maybe I'm wrong, but okay, my bias, okay, right now we have no idea how to fix okay, say the standard model. Even though some people say, oh, it's trivial, don't worry about it. However, being an experimentalist, I would love to know more so that okay, I can build no okay, say uh, you know better model. So the one in Lentau, would it still be able to use those neutrinos from Dia Bay? Yes. Okay. So you have yes. both. You have yes. Solar yeah. And, uh, so neutrino. you can you can do you know, okay a lot of experiments. Okay. The, once you have the facility. So I remember you mentioned this uh, Davis. Right? I forgot his first name. Yes. Uh, Ray, Ray Davis. Davis. Ray Davis. Yes. So he he has it down at home stake. Right. It's yes. like five thousand feet. I remember. Uh, 40, no, 45. Uh, 45, 80, I think. Yeah, yes, right. It's pretty close. <laughs> yeah, right, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember, yeah. But I remember yes. when the U.S. was trying to continue, yes. they were going to send some neutrinos from uh, Fermilab. Yes. Which is at least a 1,500 kilometers away, yeah. But this is too close in some sense. Oh, uh, no. That it is too close. It depends on, okay, say what kind of neutrino physics you, know, you want to do. You see, okay, on my list, okay, maybe I'll, I'll back up, okay, say uh, here, right? It, you can see, okay, one of the question is, okay, the whether neutrino and anti-neutrino oxidate the same way. So this is okay. The in, in the technical term is okay. What Ming Zhong said is okay. CP violation. And in order, okay, to really study, okay, say uh, you know CP violation in the neutrino oxidation. You have to have okay, say you know two different kinds of beam. You okay, use an accelerator to produce a neutrino beam. Get some data, repeat it with okay anti-neutrino, and then compare, you know the you know the, the two set of data. If they are different, then that means okay that there will be CP violation. By the way, okay, the, it's because of okay the discovery of Diabe that allow us now to address that question. If okay, say we did not see it. Essentially, okay, we have no idea how to do okay, some of okay, say, this, uh, you know, uh, problems. So uh, maybe we can save our discussions in our tea break time. So uh, thank you, Professor Lok. <laughs> And uh, to show our appreciation to our speakers, may I now invite Professor Chong Li Chen to come forth and to present souvenirs to our speakers one by one. So first, uh, Dr. Lo, please. So next, so next we have Professor Chu. And Professor Lok, please. So um, in this memorable mo moment, maybe we can all of us in this auditorium to join the big group photo taken here in front of the backdrop. So everyone, please come forth and to take a group photo before the tea break. Okay, get closer, get closer. No, no. Thank you, thank you. Can you see everybody? Yeah, yeah, I can oh, see okay. everybody. Okay, look at here. Ready, one, two, three. Can we take one more? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.